YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We have a box right here. We're opening it for you before your very eyes. If you're new to the channel, we unbox these things, we build them, then we set them up with a radio, and we show you how to get the most out of them. Hopefully, this will be the same as the other ones. Oh yeah, what do we have here? We have an FMS Zero A6M5. Powerful, realistic, and rigid. Okay, so 1100 millimeters is a great size class warbird. We can finally have a true Pacific fleet attack warbird sort of reenactment. That'll be super fun someday. On the pond? Yeah, on the pond, that's right. We can do a tour, tour, tour display. You're gonna need more people that can fly. We're gonna need more zeros. And uh, yeah, so we have done a 980 millimeter zero. Yes. And we are gonna be doing this one right now. This one, of course, comes with retracts. It's got a super scale appearance, including landing gear doors, hand-painted pilot, three-blade prop, authentic graphics, and removable drop, drop tanks. Um, okay, so EPO foam. What else? Slow scale speed flap actuation. Really? Why is it slow? Is it because it's, it's not, already done? So not, here's the overview. On your radio? Is this upside down for you? No, it's correct side up. So it's 1100 millimeters. Uh, the wingspan is obviously 1100. Flying weight 1300 grams. Motor size 35, 36, 850 kV. It's got a 40 amp ESC. Nine gram servos, six of them. And uh, center of gravity is at 60 to 65. And it's a 1057 three bladed prop. And this is supposed to fly on 2200 3S. So what we're gonna do is we are going to just flip this around like that. Now so it's, that it's down. right side up. There you go. We're gonna get a battery charging before we even open it. Because here on Brian Phillips RC, we want batteries charged because we didn't have them charged before we started the video. So we're gonna turn on our S2200. Great charger seems to be our go-to. We have lots of other chargers. This is the one we use all the time. We just plug in the smart charger and it takes off and goes very easy like that. Gen one of course would be similar, except you don't have to, but I usually plug in the balance lead and the discharge lead, and it's gonna go to town. The S2100 is real, excuse me, the S1200 is a little bit less because it's only one channel. This is a dual channel, 200 watts each. We're gonna plug this in right now. In case you guys are curious why we pick, what chargers we pick, I like dual charger because I find myself doing two charges at once. The S155 is a lot cheaper it's gonna get you in, but it's only 55 watts a single channel. And the only reason I'm going through all this is because I got a bunch of batteries and I wanna charge these things right now. So we might as well take the time to help teach you what's available. We'll have links to that stuff just like everything else. And then obviously you can press buttons and see what's going on. You can press the down arrow and see what the cell counts. And you can see the internal resistance and things like that, which may or may not be helpful to you, but at this point, we're just gonna let them charge why we unbox, except I hopefully don't need to cut it anymore. All right guys, so without further ado, the Zero. So guys, FMS makes a pretty good product. They make a lot of products for themselves. They also make products for a few other manufacturers. Hey look, another FMS over there. The Yak. Yeah. 130. It's an awesome 70 millimeter EDF jet. If you guys are looking for something that is of a little bit more recent vintage, that would be a great place to start and they've got lots of other great ones. So without further ado, here we go. Oh yeah. Ooh, I see the big Japan symbol. Oh yeah, an unfolded manual. Thank you, FMS. Good job not folding the manual. I don't like folded manuals, it drives me crazy. Even though we generally just ignore don't most of what's in the manual exactly. anyway. That's not always true. It depends on the manufacturer and it depends on how new the model is. Okay, so there you go on our gas stove next to our pile of lipos. Okay, that's a horizontal stabilizer. So here's our manual, guys. We'll just throw that over to the camera crew. FMS does a pretty good job on manuals. They sort of are basic. Yeah, but, but they, they, get they the usually get the job done. The old yeah. ones are maybe not as good as the newer ones. Okay, terrible match on color here. But it matches the oh, bottom. Oh, it matches the bottom. Okay, so that's why they did that. 
Surprised they didn't mount that and then jig it in and paint it. But either way, no big deal. Should be covered somewhat uh, when it goes into the plane, maybe. Okay, work those. It looks like pinch hinge construction. Nice opaque color. You can't see any of the foam, which is nice. Looks like a more superior finish, but these things are very, very light, okay? So these are gonna key in together and then connect the left and right sides, which is really nice. A Little bit of a ding here, as you can see. If you ever get a ding like that, if you really wanna make it look perfect, get some really hot water in a cup, dip this in just that spot, and then relax it, make sure it doesn't bubble up too much. You can fix that little bump. I'm not gonna fix that bump because I don't care. It's actually good enough for me. All right, three-bladed prop, beautiful in a plastic bag. You always gotta protect the plastic from the foam from the plastic, as you can see here. Beautiful, looks really nice. That's an FMS 1057. Pretty, very strong. Okay, we'll just keep going. There's nothing down there, so that's good. I'm gonna stuff that down there. Ooh, there might be something here. Looks like where they would hide a nut some bolt sack. And other things. I don't know what that black thing is. Maybe it's guns. Antenna? Guns? No, it's guns. Guns. Yeah, it's guns. So they'll stick into the wing somewhere. And they always put a singular staple into these Ziploc bags to keep them from unziplocking. I think sure. Ziploc is a brand. It is. Okay. It's definitely not. Let's see not what this is. Bag. I'm actually quite curious about it. I'm gonna stuff this back where it came from. Oh yeah, those are the machine guns. Yeah, we got a machine gun and a cannon. Machine gun and cannon, and then some sort of a pitot tube, and then an antenna for on the back, and then another nut bolt sack. Looks like a pretty small piece count. Yeah. So we always like that, guys. Here on Brian Phillips RC, we love a quick build because we've done so many of these planes. You may find that to be a little bit off-putting because you don't like pudding. That was terrible. It was terrible. More dad jokes to come. Don't Great. worry. Yeah. They're kind of relentless around here. Oh yeah, look. Is that silver? Okay, good. Yeah, it's painted silver, but the interior color is the underbelly color, okay? So that's gonna be the spinner mechanism. Looks like a pretty nice, nice paint job, but uh, not a high gloss finish, which is fine. I actually don't want it to be necessarily high gloss. But just in case you were thinking it might be, it's actually more of like a silver finish. So pretty cool. All right, and then we have the, uh, for the tail feathers, mm -hmm. carbon fiber rod, you can tell. And then right here we have some drop tanks. Whoa, look at that, fancy dance. Not very detailed on the back though. No. Okay, it looks like a picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah, they don't even have it on. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll put that there. All right, so sliding this opened. We got some foam to protect the foam from the foam. We're gonna stuff it in this hole so we don't, Oh, there's a quality control sticker in here. Oh. Hold on, let's see what it says. If you could just read that for me, that top line there. We didn't actually check this, but in case you thought we did, no. That's, uh, that's not what I got. I'll put that back in there. Camera crew's snide remarks. That's why you're here. Oh yeah. Oh, it's really what nice. What a beautiful. We've got dihedral on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice, crisp, and clean lines. Very pretty, unpainted on the end, so we got a wingtip highlight, yellow inboard. I don't know why they do the three colors there, but really nice looking fit and finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course the uh, drop tank is gonna go right here when it does, if it does. Amazing, okay, pretty cool. And then these are split flaps, so these are gonna deploy down made of plastic. Cool. Okay. And then the outboard ailerons. Everything feels fairly stiff. Little teeny bit of play for being EPO. Really sturdy. So that's nice and looks stiff enough. Remember, it's stiff. Stiff and enough. You didn't even point out my favorite part. Which part? The control linkages were installed. Oh yeah, the control linkages were installed. So Brian Phillips RC, we like planes that are mostly done because we don't necessarily want to spend a ton of time building them, but we know you might actually really enjoy that. I was making my pudding joke, off pudding. Yes, yeah, see so you Because if it. you're trying to work yourself off pudding, you may not like that joke. Look how big the, the wing is compared to the fuse. Look oh, wow. This, this body, the entire length of it, nose how, to tail. How often do you see the fuse 
Not very often. It's less like now, that in the box. That is really cool looking. Wow. I'm kind of surprised this is like a high gloss finish. I don't think they meant it to be that way necessarily. And then that's cool. There's actually an opening right here and you can see the guns through there. Really cool. And this thing definitely has a nice finish on it. It's like really smooth and really clean. Yeah, it so is. So cool. That Very neat. It's really nice. And then down here, this is plastic. That'd be an intake manifold, of course, in real life, but it's not actually going to act as an in intake manifold. And then some pass-throughs. We do have a reverse thrust line here. See that? Yeah. So if you need reverse thrust, however, this is a small plane. I don't think we're going to need reverse thrust, but reverse thrust is so nice. Anyway, this antenna is going to go here, I think. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it goes here like that. Which way does it go? There it goes. Okay, so that does fit in there nicely and it comes out fairly nicely. Remember, these are the first things to break if you are transporting a plane. All right, so we're just gonna lay this down. We're gonna get this out of the way. We'll come right back after we've cleaned up. All right, guys, so we've got things cleaned up a little bit. Just put away the box and set up the plane stand here. Uh, since it's such a short plane, for being an 1100 millimeter, it's very small. So I'm gonna pop this open. We'll show you inside and underneath the canopy here we've got a place to slide a battery in. Remember 2200 3S going up here. And then we just have a few wires. Um, I've seen this before from, why do they have the throttle wire going through where the battery is supposed to go? I don't understand how, why doesn't that go under the tray? Is there even a way to get under the tray? There's literally a pass through right there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. What? I don't understand why that's not under there. Um, okay, so we've got rudder and elevator. Okay, so that's one of the challenges that you'll face when you do this hobby, is just kind of like engineering things that shouldn't need to be engineered. It's a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, it's definitely not something that can't be done, can't be fixed, corrected, if you will. So I'm gonna grab a pair of forceps, and forceps, if you guys aren't aware, are just like long needle nose pliers sort of things, except they've got a clamping mechanism on them like right here, when you clamp them, then it holds, okay? So also known as hemostats, okay? See this? Clamp and they hold, okay? So like if you had somebody that was bleeding out, you could like grab their vein or artery or well, I don't know whichever side it is and you clip it and then they stop bleeding, sort of. Sometimes they keep bleeding other places, so. Lots of, lots of war related things in this Warbird reveal. Okay, XT60 connector. We've got a little bit of a little bit of room here. I'm gonna see if I can put that down there. We got a little bit of room here for Velcro. Okay, so we do this little trick where we use shelf liner to actually help adapt our batteries. Now you can use the Velcro, just stick it on your 2200 3S and then slide it in and it'll hold it in place. And that's fine. But I found that it doesn't work as effectively because then you always have the Velcro in the wrong spot. So let's go ahead and do our shelf liner trick real quick. Shelf liner, if you weren't already aware, is designed originally to line shelves and not work for batteries and RC applications. That's another hilarious dad joke in case you guys were wondering. So I'm just gonna peel this backing. Uh, my camera crew is gonna stand and watch me struggle to do this. All right, so this is shelf liner. It comes on a big roll like this. I'm gonna go this way. And I wanna generally get enough to basically go right around it. You can go a little bit oversized if you want. And then if you're in a weird application where the battery ends up way off the tray, which we've seen way too many times, then you can actually reposition that, make it stick out a little further because then it just gets braced wherever the tray is, okay? We've had really good luck doing this. The only drawback is if your battery gets warm, which it does a lot of times on EDF jets like the, like the Yak, then that adhesive backing that will stick through in these gaps will sometimes get onto your battery. So you gotta wipe them off with alcohol, but after a few times flying, it's usually kind of absolved itself of that problem, okay? So you see this? We've got this one. That's the main discharge lead coming up through the hole. 
Then we got this one, which is not the main discharge lead. It's our throttle, okay? Now, that is gonna be literally right in the way. I have no clue who designed that to be there, um, but that is a terrible design because look, where is the battery supposed to go? Your battery's supposed to go there, okay? And there's a lead going right where the battery's gonna go. So what are you supposed to stick the battery out here? It's not gonna fit, the can piece is gonna be there. So we have to work through this. You see this, this should have been underneath sticking out here. Like 1000% this has to be a mistake. There is a hole there, but I have no idea how I'm supposed to get in there. Because at the factory, these two halves are stuck together with chain glue, okay? So I don't know what to do. Now I have to take a few minutes and think about this and figure out what I'm gonna do. But in the meantime, this is gonna stick here and it's gonna go right there. Now here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to show you guys the full story so that you guys have an idea whether or not these planes are worth getting. Now in these applications, we're running into stupid technical problems like that. There's more than one way to skin a cat admittedly, but I do wanna share something with you. This annoys me. That should never be coming up right there because my battery is gonna be stuck through here and Velcroed about right here, okay? So I just, I'm not sure the best way to do this. You could, you could let that get pushed down like in there so that it avoids the motor mount. Can you show them the motor mount? And guys, I just have to tell you this right now. It's gonna be hard for you to see inside of this canopy. Mm -hmm. It's tight. It's hard for the camera crew to film. It's hard for me to film because I'm trying to hold the plane at weird angles. And so we do our best. Please hear that in advance. We are trying to do our best so you can see because that's the whole point of this video after all. So if I got my forceps, here's my next step. I wanna see if I can slide them in here. The bent tips are not gonna work. The long tips probably aren't either. There is kind of a cavity there. I'm just hoping I can get up there and then pull this through, because this is glued in after all. And it's not gonna be easy to get out. If I can't get a flat bladed screwdriver through, then I'm probably not gonna be able to get the wire through, okay? Uh, I can't tell if I'm above or below the ESC, the electronic speed control, if you guys don't know what that means. Okay, this needs to come out. It needs to go back here where the receiver's gonna go, fine. And then all that crap has to come through and go where the receiver's gonna go too. So it's gonna be a big bundle of mess right here. And then there'll probably be a receiver in this general vicinity here or here, something like that, okay? So just thinking through all those parameters, I have to come up with a plan. So I'm gonna push this down. Let's just grab a 2200 3S and see if we can get one. Here's a 2200 3S that's not currently charging. This is a battery we plan to use. It's a 30C, they call for 25C, okay? I'm just gonna see where this ends up if I go ahead and slide this in here. And your battery lead is gonna stay up on top. You're just worried about the ESC wire, right? <sighs> I am worried about both because the problem is this battery needs to go where the lead is. And so if you slide it off to the side, that's all hunky dory, except it's not going to stay out of the way. So there you go. So now I'm all the way up front and it just kind of sits on the side. I guess you could hypothetically do that, but it just seems kind of half butted. See this? Look, mm -hmm. that's got to get all the way around. Big miss, FMS. FMS do better. Look, right here. That thing, the whole assembly needs to be under here. Come out this side. Yep. Okay, period. It's not rocket science here we're talking about. I don't care if it costs more labor, do it. So here's the thing. So that's gonna be held over here and there's just nothing more I can come up with to resolve that, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some toothpicks because that's what we do when we get pissed off here on Brian Phillips RC is we grab a toothpick and we stab something with it. And this does annoy me a lot actually, guys. You've seen how many planes I've done and I don't like having to re-engineer this junk. This should have been engineered. It should have been resolved by somebody named Ying or Ding. Do you see this? Look at this, watch this. See what I just... Yeah, the front. Yeah. I put it in the front on purpose. I have reasons for why I'm doing this. Because Ying didn't do it. Oh yeah, do you, do you guys see where it came out? 
Turn the light on if you need to. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? This is not an accident. This is all purposeful. Do you guys see this? Look, talk about a perfect plan. Oh yeah, ying ding, eat your heart out. Look at that. Look at that, right there. Now that's out of the way and it's trapped. Okay, and you've got this sweet little new antenna. Just kidding, relax guys. I'm gonna break it off and force it through. Watch this, it's gonna be like this. <laughs> oh, there it is, got it. Now watch this. This is too big for that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my handy dandy tool holder, camera crew. See this, I'm gonna grab the smallest. That's not small enough, that's 1.5 millimeters. I've got one that's even 0.7 millimeters. Look at that, look how small that tip is. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh yeah, wowzers. Ooh, that felt good. Okay, look at that. Now, our battery is out of the way. Amazing. And yet we didn't have to tear the plane literally in half. I did have to put a hole in it though, which is fine, I forgive Ying for that. Do better, Ying. All right, so now I stick this back here and I can go all the way up to the motor, to the motor, okay? If I want to, I don't have to go all the way to the motor. It may need to be pulled out a little bit to get the CG right anyway. And if that's the case, then we can all learn from my screw up. But I don't think it's a screw up yet. I will admit to that later when that gets proven, okay? So for now, I'm gonna figure out, cause really this cable management, we're really, really, really early in this build for cable management, but the truth is, it's gotta get done at some point. You gotta get this crap under control because I don't wanna be fighting it when I go to fly. I'm gonna teach you something, guys. If you're brand new to the hobby and you're not sure how this works, when you get a plane, you have to answer some of these stupid questions. And stupid questions that we usually think, hey, they will have worked that out for me. They didn't. Um, but it's not a big deal. I have enough lead here to work with. Now I'm just more concerned about my servo cable that's going back, that's going to then uh, not only feedback BC voltage and energize my circuit for the receiver, it's also going to send back out the throttle signal. And then in this case, if we want to flip and do reverse thrust, we can do that with this. Now, I have noticed it's a little bit strange with FMS products. Sometimes we get reverse thrust and other times we don't. We don't exactly know why that is, but I can tell you this, I have a knife and I'm willing to use it. What, you thought those were related, camera crew? <laughs> Pay attention. Sense, but... Don't cut yourself on camera like I do. That'd be bad. Okay, I'm gonna cut at an angle like this. See what I'm doing? I'm cutting at an angle like this, like this. I cut this like this. And then I'm gonna take this flat screwdriver and I'm gonna go like this. And then I'm gonna take this wire and I'm gonna stuff it in the hole like this. You see what I've done? Look at that, that is so amazing. Wow, wow. Okay, eat your heart out, ying. Okay, now I've pushed this down so it's flat and I don't know where the receiver's gonna go, but you know what, what the heck, let's just figure it out. It's easier to do this stuff now than it is later. I don't see a reflex in there and I don't think you will either. So you're not gonna use a 620 a 620 would give you, let's just go through the channels real quick. You'd have throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, which we do have flaps on this plane, even though from the top, it looks like we don't. That's because there's split flaps that come out from the bottom. And then retracts, five, six. Then you would lock it in the condition you want with one of the channels and then put it back to retracts or flaps, okay? So you're gonna be short by one channel if you wanna do mode. But you can set your mode on a reflex. So just so you know, this is being reviewed as a plug and play. And so you're not gonna have a reflex to worry about, okay? Now over here, we obviously don't have a reflex, but we just have this like joining Y cable replacement sort of thing, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But right now, the 620 would only work if you wanted to have no stabilizer or auto leveling, okay? Now, the other thing too to keep in mind is that because this is a six channel, you might wanna go up to the eight channel, which would be like an 8020T if you did get it with the reflex, cause then you would be able to change modes and you'd be able to add in thrust reverse. Now thrust reverse on this plane may not be necessary. It just kind of depends on if you're landing on a short strip. And our strip is not super short for an 1100 millimeter plane. 
But again, we have had 1100 millimeter planes that really, you know, stretch the landing strip out. So we'll go to either a 630 or a 631. Okay, so 630 compared to 631. Let's talk about the differences and the similarities. This is gonna provide the same telemetry and the same auto leveling and stabilization via Astriax and SAFE as this one. The difference is this one has an external antenna. It's about five bucks more. This one has an internal antenna. It's about five bucks less, okay? Now, these are not six channel receivers. They're six channel pluggable receivers, which means that we can still do mode and master gain on the 620 or 630. 630 also has end pins. 620 has top pins, okay? Top pins in this application would be fine. End pins would be fine. But really, honestly, I prefer to have the antenna when possible. And plus, the bigger the plane gets, the more I want the antenna and the less I want to be antenna-less. However, this might be a bit of a tight squeeze because if you look at the canopy, how much penetration you're going to get into this opening is going to dictate somewhat what you have to work with. Now, part of the reason it's so deep is because of the detailed hand-painted pilot, which looks really good, I might add, okay? So if and when you decide on your receiver, just respect the fact that you're gonna have something that's going down right here, okay? If it goes down right there, then it's going to be an issue, and I wanna make sure you realize you're not gonna have infinite space here, okay? So my predisposition is for the 631. Now, if you wanna have more telemetry than the 630, one or 630 provides you go to 637t and you can add in pack telemetry via that red and black cable that would plug into a telemetry port and you would know what your battery voltage is but in my experience especially if you're flying with the gen 1 pack on a tractor driven prop plane you can pretty much figure out your times with a voltage alarm set it in your radio set it in your nx10 or your nx70 or whatever it is you're using and just respect the timer to a certain extent because you're gonna get similar flight times. We see a bigger disparity and quicker chance of losing a plane on EDFs than we do on prop-driven tractor planes in particular, okay? So I think the good balance is the 631. Now, if you ever decide to pull out the reflex, or excuse me, not the reflex, but the ESC, the 40 amp ESC that's included in here to go to a bigger or a different spectrum ESC that would be like an avian ESC, which first of all, I'm gonna just warn you one thing. It's gonna be challenging to get in there because I think what you have to do is take off the entire cowl. There's two screws here. Then you pull that off and you can get to the motor, but there's still gonna be a difficulty getting to the ESC. Full disclosure, okay? So if you put in the avian ESC, then you can use serial feedback through this circuit to control thrust reverse and also get telemetry pack voltage on a 630, 631, okay? Then you wouldn't need the 637. 637T, I should say, specifically. 637T will allow you to do that with the factory ESC, okay? So we're gonna go with 631, I think, because, except I am a little bit nervous about how, how small this opening is gonna be, because this opening is gonna be pretty tight. Let's, uh, let's try that real quick with just what we've got. And remember, there's a lot more cables coming up. Once you stick this in here, going in, going down, Oh man, it's just got a kind of a tight fit in the back. I don't think it had anything to do with anything right here, but just kind of paying attention. Here's a trick too. go from the side here, go from the side. You see how you can see how it's going in there over here. You can drop it down and you can tell about how deep it goes. Okay. Then you can kind of mark it with your finger. So yeah. So it looks like it's going to the bottom of this rail. So there should be room for a receiver under there, but if you had an end pin, then you would be able to have it pointed this way with like the end pins. All the wires could be pulled in this, this opening between the two cavities. Tough call. Honestly, we don't have to 100% know that right this second, but the only reason we did is because we were trying to cut channels for our cable management, okay? So you see these two other cables coming out. Okay, so throttles brought back here. We'll deal with a little bit more later if we have to. These two, you see how that's going right next to the control horn? That's not good, okay? Again, ying, come on, man. These need to come out over here so they're out of the way. And there's a lot of material here, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, you know? Because really, there's no reason why there shouldn't be an exit strategy that's a little bit more effective for this type of wire, okay? So you see, I cut that, and then I'm just gonna take my flat screwdriver and just kind of rip that little teeny bit out. 
Remember, you don't want to be, you see where my hand is? You want to kind of make sure you got a little bit of girth there on your material before you do something like this. Because you don't want to rip this out and then realize you're down to an open spot where you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to just clamp onto that with my forceps and just give it a twist and that'll pull that little bit of EPO foam out. Okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm trying to get down here to where I can actually redirect uh, those wires underneath these little servo mount brackets, okay? And once we do that, see they're already listed, elevator and rudder, so it's not gonna be hard to remember which one's which, but it might be a little bit challenging to get these out. Again, that would be something I would have really liked to see done at the factory because there's really no excuse for it, knowing that this would have been a lot easier to do once while they were assembling the aircraft, okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm just reaching in here, reaching in here and trying to get, okay, so that's not gonna work very easy. So I'm gonna try a different technique and that's gonna be to grab onto this sideways, okay? And you see, I can't get these things to clamp together but my objective is to hold it real snug, get the wire down, and I can't, I can't fit, because I have to get between those two horns. Man, that is a really tight squeeze, guys. And this is all for cable management, so you may not care. You may just be like, whatever, I'll just risk it, Brian. You can totally do that, I just wouldn't recommend it. And by the way, my recommendations are very opinion driven. Okay, look, there it is, it's coming through. There it is, guys. So now I just have to figure out a way to get that out without dropping it back. So now I'm gonna take a uh, flat screwdriver to just hold the other side. I'm gonna reach in and grab both sides. There we go. Now I can twist it, twist and shout. There it is. Okay, now my second set of forceps. By the way, these forceps are a really handy tool to have. If you don't have some, I think we have links to something like it. Mm -hmm. So just check out brianphillipsrc.com. We have links to that sort of thing. And all I wanna do is just get that down there in that cavity, but I do wanna keep a loop back, and here's why. Because then I can use that loop to pull that down there. Once I've established where exactly my receiver goes, then I can tuck all that back there where it's basically like luggage space, okay? Make sense? Just do me a favor, never clamp these on a wire. You will cut it, I guarantee it. Make sense? Okay, so this time I'm gonna try a different technique. I am gonna clamp this right here. And this side comes out closer to the front of the plane so I can get away with this. And then I'm gonna just kind of let go of it and just walk it forward. So folks, if you don't know how to do all these little uh, nitpicky tricks, this is kind of what we bring for extra value on Brian Phillips RCs. We show exactly how to set this stuff up. And that's part of the reason we do it is so that we can help grow the hobby and give people the best possible experience without having to spend pretty much any extra money. But at the end of the day, when and if you decide to buy a plane, when you buy them from the links in the video description below, you help support our channel financially because we work with these companies and we have affiliate relationships, which basically means that they send us small commissions when and if you decide to buy them. And yet we still badmouth their decisions, like why did they not feed this wire under here? It's totally baffles my mind. And that's what we do because we have a good relationship with the, the companies we work with, but they still make bad decisions from time to time and we'll point them out. And that's exactly what you get on Brian Phillips RC is you get the full truth, nothing but the truth. So help us God, as we are in our pursuit of growing the RC hobby, helping to prevent one and done's getting people back in the hobby and all those different things. Okay, so I'm gonna really have to pull this one hard because I'm at a bad angle and I've got a little bit, there we go, see it's through. Okay, now that's one of the beauties of working with a foam plane over a balsa wood plane is that you can do things like this. Couldn't do that on a foam or on a, a balsa wood plane. But I'm not saying that that's the only advantage. There are some other advantages, but for now, you can see we've got that pulled through. We've got this nice loop and we're gonna try to put it back here. Now back here is okay because back here is a giant luggage compartment for extra wire and cable, right? So what's wrong with having all the cable up here? You'll understand in a minute when I put the wing on uh, because it's going to be increasingly gigantically stuffed. All right, so here we go. 
All right, so just uh, get in there. This is the, the Forcep Apology Apologist channel, Brian Phillips RC, evidently, because I've never had forceps more critically necessary in a build for a long time, right? I shouldn't say never, it's been a long time. I've had others where you really, really need forceps. Also, when you're doing this for fun, when you're sitting here enjoying a, a beverage and listening to music or hanging out with your family, it's definitely a little bit less frustrating than when you're filming because the camera crew is having to look over my shoulder the whole time. All right, so this could go here. It could go on the side. I'm just like torn on if I'm gonna have room for this or if I'm gonna have to go to the 630. But either way, I think I'll come back to that because my next step is probably gonna be, normally I'd put the tail feathers on. Um, now that we have established the battery solution, we've established some of the cable management. I'd really like this to come back here, but I just don't know what, whether it's gonna plug in here or if it's gonna plug in here. I'm not sure yet. We'll come back to that one too. I feel like I could, I could go one more notch, but I just don't know if I need to. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm gonna take the big screwdriver, big flat screwdriver and just make an opening. And then I can just take this cable and slide it into the slot that we just created, okay? And believe it or not, it'll basically just stay there, okay? And then what we can do is we can tuck all this stuff down to where they're about the same length here, see? So that's very nice. Then it'll be easy to land our cables. Now keep in mind, this is where that canopy dip, dips down, okay? So just be mindful of that. All right, so the next part of the build is gonna be probably going ahead and assemble the tail feathers because they're short and then the wings last. Um, we don't have a lot of assembly on this plane, to be honest, okay? So we'll slide this through and then this is gonna go through on the other side. But of course we have to pass through the fuselage. All right, so how does this get mounted? Oh, there's screws, good. Okay, so I'm gonna move the knife over so I don't get cut. This is gonna go through here. Boy, that one is very persistent. Mm -hmm. Little chunk of foam. Okay, so once we get this through, see that screw hole? We gotta put a screw in. So we're gonna do that next but I actually have to adjust my plane stand. Guys, if you have one of these Robar plane stands, if you ever have to adjust this and you have a hard time doing it, take some baby powder and put it on these tubes and it'll make it a lot easier to adjust. Cause when I first got mine, obviously I've moved in and out a little bit on these for a long time, but it's gonna be a lot easier for you. Okay, so you see this is just gonna slide on just like we did. And then we can get the control arm out of the way or the control horn out of the way. And then just kind of align those two mechanisms and then slide it in really easy peasy. All right, and then this will be ready to be hooked up after a bit. Beautiful tail wheel, a little bit of a rubbery tire, but I doubt it's gonna do much to debounce um, the tendency to be bouncy. I'm guessing this thing's gonna bounce every time you land it. Um, all right, so we have two screws that we need to insert here. Camera crew, what screws? I think they're the short black ones. The short black ones, okay? Short black ones here. So if you look, those are Phillips. Because then there will be one extra, which would be normal. All right, so that's not correct. Um, I'm gonna look at my screwdriver set, guys. So the screwdrivers, I wanna get a bigger Phillips tip. Four millimeters, that's probably closer. It's to be like a 0 0.5, Phillips 0 0.5, Phillips one maybe. Okay, so that's tight, really easy. Okay, see I'm holding it with my index finger. I'm just kind of got it in there. Well, they blend in nicely too, that's good. Nice and tight, tight like a tiger. Okay, and then we can flip this over and at some point, we'll go ahead and land this. This is, clevis is gonna turn in and out respectively. 
and there's like a little bit of a ball that gets snapped onto and then the plastic rests on that little point right there. I'll point with the knife. It's gonna rest on this little point right here. You'll snap it in there and then you'll slide this fuel tube back to actually lock it in place. So we'll come back to that. Looks like the retract mechanism, very cool. All right, so now we gotta get the wing on here. So obviously the wing is gonna be pretty basic and simple to mount. There's four screws. And uh, of course we have to get our wires out, okay? So I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Boy, that piece of foam is so persistent. I can't get rid of it. I think there might've been two of them. Oh, there's a zip tie on here. Okay, so we're gonna cut that cable tie or zip tie there with a pair of side cutters. And that's gonna give us access to this. Now, the other thing I noticed is that there's these uh, cannons and guns and I think we have to uh, take apart the wing to put those in. Um, where does it go? Yeah, it goes here, guys. See this? So this gets lifted. Um, I need a screwdriver, so. I'm gonna grab my flat screwdriver. See, I can push that into the hole and then lift. It's gonna lift that up. All right. So there should be a total of three of those points and these things are gonna drop right in there, okay? Now they look like they're ambidextrous. Yeah, they're fine. And then same thing here on the pitot tube. Okay, so lifting that up. They've just got some double-sided tape in there. And I'm sh assuming they're probably saying to use CA or some sort of glue, right? I think it just said glue, I'm, I don't think it's specified. Had like the little glue symbol. Yeah. Okay. This one's coming off really badly. Jeez. Oh. Damage my paint. Dang it. That's frustrating. So this double-sided tape, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Um, you could use the double-sided tape if you wanted, but I don't think it's gonna work as effectively because you would need double-sided tape on the top and the bottom of both apparatus. Now, FMS does sell some really good China glue. I know it's surprising, Chinese glue from a Chinese company. But if you're getting this from another company or you've got like a leftover little tube from another build, pretty much if it comes in an unmarked tube and it's white like this and it smells like rubber cement, that's pretty much FMS or it's China glue. Not necessarily from FMS, okay? So this is the FMS China glue. I don't even think we opened it yet. We didn't open it yet because we've got tubes different sized. There's China glue. That was a gift, by the way, from somebody. Okay, so we'll just use this up. This probably came from Dynam. See how it's all yellow and yucky looking? That's because it's from Dynam, I think. But it still works. And since it's hidden here, it doesn't really matter. And you'll notice I'm using quite a bit of it. Ooh, this, this double-sided tape, I'm gonna get this out of here. I think the double-sided tape is on. Oh, of course you would. Oh, I missed it, thank goodness. You guys see what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna get glue all over my fingers. This is why I like China glue, it rubs right off. See this? Pull that double-sided tape off, stick it to itself, and then you can roll it up in a booger ball and then throw it away, right? Now, over here, same thing. Just put a little bit on there, and you're like, that seems like a lot, Brian. Yeah, the stuff, it, it does, actually make up for some gap filling properties too. Uh, so what I like to do is once I get it glued on there, I will spread it with a Q-tip because Q-tips are cheap, they're plentiful, and you can use them to help clean up any spillage of glue later. And I'll show you that as we go. Okay, so we'll just go around like this, kind of twist and turn, get it into the grooves. Okay, very simple. And then like this, you guys see that it like wasn't trans transmitting onto that one spot? That's because the mold release was really thick in that spot. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna get in here and hit this inside edge. And I'm gonna take this, you notice I'm using the same spot on the same Q-tip and that's intentional. I'll tell you why. You see how it squeezes out and then I can reuse a little bit of it? Okay. Then once I get that done, I can come around to the other side 
and I can squeeze that out and get a little bit of this contact cement on the other side as well, okay? Now really this actually is probably gonna need a little bit more glue because I'm not getting very much on there. Now the China glue from FMS is nice and clear. We've had real good luck with it and it's definitely worth having a few tubes. So if you're ordering this from FMS, make sure you order a little bit of that glue too and hopefully you can get that uh, shipped with your order and save a buck or two on shipping. So, like I said, this just happens to be a smaller tube. And by the way, one of the things I really like about China Glue is that it has got a rubbery sort of, um, a certain amount of flexibility to it, which is really nice because, you know, you're going to bump and bruise these planes, especially foamies. And so you might as well plan on it. If you do CA, CA is brittle. I'm not saying CA doesn't have a time or place. It is very quick. It is very easy to use. And uh, there's no reason you shouldn't use it if you have a good tube and it's opened and it's drying out. Because remember, once you open your CA, it is pretty much working itself into oblivion. Even if you put it in a bag, even if you put it in another bag, even if you put it in the freezer, even if you put it in the fridge. I've done all the tricks and I've always killed my CA glue. But when I'm building a wooden balsa wood model, I am gonna be using CA like crazy, okay? All right, so you get all that and you see I got a little bit on the front side, so that's no good. So I'm gonna take the clean side of the Q-tip and just let that get coated in that little bit and just walk that off of there. Just let it roll right off. See how it just kinda sticks to itself? And if you do it carefully, it won't take any of your finish off, which is really cool. Now, the other thing is you got a little bit left on this side and that'll help clean up if you make a mess somewhere else, okay? So I'm just gonna set that across my forceps. Then these, these are keyed. They're only gonna fit one way on both sides um, or on either side respectively. So I'm just gonna slide those into their respective sockets, okay? Just like that. And then where did the by the yeah okay so there's a reason i'm holding this in my hand guys that's because it's sort of stuck to me so i have like no interest in worrying about it because i'm going to take it off right now so this one goes here sorry so now if you really really wanted the best bond you would probably put a little bit more glue on top of the plastic but whatever this is good enough and by the way we do this so much so much of the time you can overthink this step and it's really not that critical. It's not that big a deal. It's not structural. It's not gonna make your plane fly better or worse, but it is definitely gonna look cool. And they make you guys do this probably because it wouldn't have fit in the mold for the shipping package otherwise, okay? And by the way, you'll notice that that stuff is pretty much set up. And if it were a load bearing piece, you could probably pick it up right now and buy it. That's how quick that stuff works. You spread it out, by the time it's spread out, it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. And that's why I like China Glue, because it does really work nicely for that. Now, I don't have any seepage here where there's like a big bubble or whatever of it, but if you did have that, all you have to do is take your, take your glue, whatever's on your Q-tip yet, and you can work that stuff to where it is super, 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 super sticky, and you can just peel it right up like that. The other thing I like about it is you can clean it off of your fingers. It's not like CA where you're gonna glue yourself together and the way you clean them apart is with an X-Acto knife. Um, but honestly, you can use acetone to get that stuff off of your skin. If your wife uses uh, nail polish, she'll have acetone and you can use that to break down the adhesive. But it is gonna ruin foam, so don't get it on foam. All right, so getting back to the point, now that we have all that stuff glued in, we'll go ahead and get this figured out. All right, so we on clipped the wire tie, and now we have exposed the ball of mess. Okay, so this houses all that crap. So I'm just gonna slide that back down in there, and then this is going to stick out. So we have an aileron, we have gear, and we have flap, okay? So pretty straightforward stuff. Now you could glue this little box down in here if you wanted. I'm probably not going to because it's going to get trapped anyway, I think. I need to be able to get to the plane. So I'm going to slide the plane, hold this black thing with my thumb, and then just drop these things in. Okay, once that passes through the cavity, 
Then we can just set this down in here. Keeping in mind it is a straight wing attachment, which is a little bit unusual. Usually they kind of fold into place like they pocket in. Okay, so once that's down in there, I'm going to see all that paint scraping off. That's why you got to be careful. Started scraping off. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to set the plane by its wing and just double check. Yep, everything is in there and everything is accessible enough for me to reach. Now, the other thing is if you're really careful the way you did it, you could actually put your receiver into this pocket. But just uh, see how this is tangled on itself. I'm not sure. I like the way that went. Okay, coming back off. Pulling straight out. All right, guys. Here's the problem I had. These wires, I want to come out a certain way. And they're not, okay? Because I want them to be on this side of the, of the box. There they are. That's gonna buy us the most potential for length. I'm gonna take and hold this with my fingers hard and pull straight. Because I wanna take the memory from that big tangled ball out of there, okay? See, now I've got them to flatten. This is malleable and ductile, so when you pull hard, they will straighten out. See how the memory goes away? This is, this is uh, what you occasionally have to do. See what I'm doing? It's getting very hot. It's almost burning my fingertip when I do that. Okay, now they're nice and straight. And then we're gonna try to turn this so that it's an appropriate angle. See, remember, this is going to the back of the plane, like this. So I just as soon have it pointed toward the back of the plane. And look at that mess. What a mess. I'm gonna glue it. I'm sick of it. It's getting Could glued. Could you put a piece of tape over it or just something so it doesn't move? Yeah, I'm gonna put some glue in there. Because I don't wanna fight it. I'm sick of fighting it. Now I can still, I can still pull this out, no problem. Because I'm not gonna like, all I have to do is just undermine whatever little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of glue I put on there. Okay. So we let that set for a second. And by the way, if you guys want to glue your receivers in rather than using double-sided tape or whatever, that's fine too. I've done it a number of times and it's usually fine. Some of the receivers claim they want to have some isolation from vibration. And I just don't find that to be totally true. It seems disingenuous to me. So you see how I'm just in and out with it. Next thing you know, it's gonna have enough retention to hold that thing in place. Good. See how quick that worked? Very nice. The dihedral on this wing does make it quite frustrating to hold because <laughs> it just like always moves away from where I need it to be. And I don't wanna damage it, okay? All right, so we've got that where it needs to be. Now we can flip it upside down and see it's not falling all over itself now, okay? Camera crew is gonna stay right where she is. And I'm gonna pass this right through. See how much easier this is now, now that we got the cable management taken care of? And that's what I was talking about, all that paint. You gotta be super duper careful that you don't scrape too much off. Because if you do, you'll see it. All right, now screws that we need. What are the long screws You're using for? long and short here, but I'm not sure. It's not clear if the longs go in the front or the back. So listen, there is a spinner too that's involved. The spinner is gonna receive a screw. Yep, you're gonna use two long in the wing and two short in the wing. And, and that then will give you one, one spare. short for the spinner and one spare and one long spare. Uh, how does this, oh yeah, that goes to this. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. Prop goes on, this goes on top of prop, this goes into there, except I'm not sure I agree. I think it might actually end up being the long one. I'm not sure yet though. Okay. Let me turn this. That's a two millimeter drive. Yeah, it should be. I'm going to grab a two millimeter drive and we'll see if this works. So a two millimeter drive is going to drop down in here and it's threading in because the paint is thick enough that it's created a, a channel for the threads. So once I get that in there, then I'm going to turn it and rip the threads out. Okay. Then it'll make it a lot easier to actually back it off. Okay. So this is gonna go onto there. I guess we'll build this now. There's no reason not to. Octagonal drive slides onto the octagonal. Okay, so it's on there. 
Then I'm gonna push this on and I'm gonna turn that until it hits the face of this thing. Okay. Then I'm gonna tighten this on. I'll have to find a screwdriver here in a second. Okay. So now I've got a screwdriver here, so I'll use this. And I'll just torque this down. Okay, that's good. Beautiful. And then this thing, let's see if we pick the right side. Looks like we did. And the right length too. It's a good call, camera crew. Okay, so you see this? I'm just gonna turn this in until it gets on there. And then these little rails catch. Oh yeah, nice fit, nice fit. Torque that down. Okay, pretty good. Looks beautiful. All right, so now that helps to designate what we're gonna use. We're gonna use two of these and we're gonna use two of these. And guess what that does? That leaves the customary one of each type of screw for an FMS model. Mm -hmm. So process of elimination works once again. Where's the long go, front or back? That's, you tell me. What? I was confused. That drawing sucks. Yes. So basically the long is supposed to go on the back. Okay. Let's see, we'll find out real quick here. So long in the back, short in the front. That would make sense. The drawing does not, is weird. Well, not only that, but they have flat screws and these are pan heads. Well, and the other two go under the gear door. So you're gonna have to. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Does this open? No, it doesn't. Uh, so okay, we, well, that's so we annoying. Can't put those in yet, then? I will show you how we're going to do that next after I get these screws done. Camera crew, while I tighten this screw, she can go get the XPC battery checker and a 1300 3S. Or actually, don't we already have a 3S? We already have a 3S. Well, I was say, like, can you use that 3S you've got? Yeah, that's there? fine. Okay. Okay, so guys, watch what I'm doing. Pucker, 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 pucker. As it puckers, you know you're tight. Okay, now we have to open the gear, right? Mm -hmm. So real quick, careful, I'm gonna flip it over. By the way, it is pretty cool watching these planes come together like all at once. It's fun to see that and see how quick it actually happens. So I might as well drop this right on there and then put the antenna on the canopy because all these details make the planes so dang cool. Some of you watching may be watching just for the unbox build radio setup portion. And then some of you watching might be watching, is that correct? Yeah, that goes pretty much straight up and down like that. Mm -hmm. There's also a tie point here, if you look really close, and you can put a string through there and you can tie it to the back, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Cause that would have been part of the original assembly in the real plane. Okay. So this, and then the battery, XPC battery checker, gets plugged into the balance, not the balance lead, but this discharge lead, click, click, servo tester, 1520, and then I can go to gear. Uh, it looks like the brown is toward me in this case. Are they opened? Yep. Okay, now I can unplug my XPC battery checker, which is also a servo tester, if you guys didn't already know that. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, and there you have it. So now the gear are open. We have these super detailed doors. Looks like all simulated oleos. These are not very soft, but they do give a little bit. And that is definitely necessary to get in there. And it definitely makes sense to use the shorter screws on the front because they're going underneath the gear door. Now, if you don't have an XPC battery checker, don't worry. You can still use your regular receiver and you can just energize your plane and set that up and just do this step without forgetting, okay? Yeah. So it's not like you have to do this now, it's just gonna be a little easier for us in our particular application and the way we're building. Now I am gonna complain about something else today. That is these countersink screws are the wrong type for this. They needed flat screws for the way they built their pieces. But again, they do work. And so for that reason, it's not a big gripe, it's just kind of a gripe. So guys, there's a difference between a big gripe and a small gripe. A big gripe is a big problem that might actually constitute some sort of an aerobatic performance issue or not aerobatic, 
but just a performance issue. Mm -hmm. And then a small gripe is, that seems stupid. Why would you do it that way? We see those all the time in these builds, but honestly, I think it's more prevalent in some of the older models and this being one of the older models, meaning it's been around for a little bit, but we haven't done it. So we're super excited to be bringing it to you from FMS. All right, so now that that's done, we don't even need the plains, plain oh. sand. Just pretty sweet. We'll lay it on its own three feet and then you can have that and it would be done, built, but it's not done and flyable because we have to finish our receiver. So that leads us to our portion of the video where we do radio setup, okay guys? So we're gonna link to the different choices, but just so you know, YouTube in their vast wisdom thinks you're too stupid to realize that when you follow an affiliate link from an affiliate like us, we are somehow trying to trick you, we're not. When you follow the link, we'll make commission if you buy the item, okay? Mm -hmm. That's never been in the dark. We've been talking about it for almost a decade now. Um, but Google thinks that's dangerous or they claim it is. They want to make a safe place. AKA they want to make some more money. Yeah. They don't want you to leave. They would, would yeah. hurt their feelings. God forbid you would like go and buy the thing and then watch me finish setting it up right. on their platform. All right. So that is why when you click the link for the 631 or the 630, you may not see this. It's going to bring you to a landing site on Brian Phillips RC so that you can choose whichever receiver. So 631 and 630 are different. You get to pick. It's always up to you. We just try to serve you guys the best we can. And because Google is doing this, it's making it harder for us to communicate with you directly and in a very concise method. Yeah. So we have to now make a list for you to choose from once you go. And so please help us, help us help you, help us help the new people in the hobby by when you do click the link, don't be frustrated because there's one extra step you have to choose, but you have to listen to what I say and then do what I say when you follow, okay? Otherwise it won't work. Cause it's just gonna bring you to choices between the 631 and the 630 and the 637T and the six, or the 8360T and the 8020T. We don't mean to confuse you. It's just a workaround until Google takes their head out of their butt, which will probably never happen. So, so it might, might it's going to be a permanent worker. You might have to click twice instead of once. We apologize. We, start, sorry. we didn't want it that it's way. way and for it. years it was fine, but evidently now it's not, not safe because it breaches a policy that nobody seems to understand exists because it doesn't. All right, guys, getting back to the point, we don't mean to complain. It's just more a matter of we want you to understand where we're coming from. If you click that link, it would normally just go to the different receivers and you would just choose one. We're not trying to make it harder for you intentionally. No, we're doing it because it's literally the only way to do it. We're right trying now. to make it so you can still get what you need. Yeah, that's right. So that being said, uh, we didn't glue that antenna. Do we need to glue that antenna, you think? I don't know just if leave it out. said. It just says slide it in, actually. I guess we wouldn't have to glue it. Well, don't glue if you don't have to. Yeah, and so the rest of the installation is pretty much just like, you know, the only thing we're gonna be worried about is the center of gravity, Somewhere. which you already kind of verbally mentioned, and then the hole for the elevator. Oh, it doesn't matter the hole. All right, so the elevator is gonna be plugged into the outside control horn, but we haven't made adjustments yet, so we'll have to do that as part of the radio setup, okay? So radio setup starts now, and that's where we need to start by making a profile. I still have not decided between 630 and 631. Right now, we could probably go with either one, but we're gonna probably lean toward, I don't know, the 631 might, might take up more room than we have in this plane, hun. But I think what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and start a receiver or click cancel and back and scroll to add new model and we're gonna create an acro and then we'll pause when we're creating. All right, so now that it's done creating a new model, we can go to model type if you need to reset anything. Just remember, it's gonna reset everything. Model name, so this is 188, and this is where we would type FMS zero, and so on and so forth. We'll be right back when we're done typing. All right, so the FMS zero A6 M5, 1.1 meter, and then the aircraft type, we're gonna set it as one aileron and one flap, and the tail's normal. We're gonna select an image. I don't know which which one we'll do though. Hmm. I got the BF109, but no zero. How about we do? It's closer to the P47. Okay. 
and then flight mode setup, since this is AS3X and safe, okay, we're gonna have retracts on A, we're gonna have flaps on B, nothing on C, and then we'll use switch D. So switch D, we'll have three flight modes. Spoken flight modes are gonna be AS3X, off, and then safe, okay? So I can set, and remember, these are just labels. So we're gonna type those in. When I go in here, cancel, cancel, clears it. And then I can type the letters AS3X and we'll come back. Okay, so remember, this is what's gonna be displayed on the screen during normal flight. And then of course, I'm gonna scroll way down to about here and I'll get AS3X for an audio event. So AS3X, then we're gonna set off and we'll be right back. Okay, so off, and then there is a word off. So we'll get that, bring it up. All right, so the word off. And then we'll set this one to say safe. Okay, so then we're gonna scroll in here and set the word to safe. So now it says safe mode. Okay, so we got the modes. Remember, those are just labels. Channel sign, I wanna unassign B from aux two because we're gonna be using that for something else. In this case, let's talk about what we're gonna have. Throttle, then ailerons, then elevator, then rudder, then gear, then NA is gonna be for flaps. I don't know why they make it say NA instead of saying flaps, but they do. And then aux two would normally be attached to switch B for some weird reason, but we don't want aux two to be on there. We want aux two to be on switch D, or flight mode, okay? Because we want that to be associated with what's happening with switch D. Remember, you're like, wait, this is an AR631 or a 630. That's only six channels and you're on the seventh channel. That's correct. Because you can also control the eighth channel and so on and so forth. I think you can even do more. Right knob is gonna be associated to aux three, which is channel eight. And that's gonna give us our master game, okay? So we can walk out of here. All right, so there it is. And now we know where to land our cables from the monitor, okay? So, but before we do that, let's go ahead and set up the stuff we know, like dual rates and expo. We're gonna go switch F. We're gonna always set these up by default. It's gonna be the same setting, um, five, 10, and then 20. If you guys are watching this for the first time and you think like this is overwhelming, don't worry. I do this by heart on like every plane I do. It's quite easy. But at the same time, the first time is going to be difficult for most things. So five, then 10, then 20. So what you'll notice is it's a doubling or halving effect. Okay, so half, half again, double, double again, right? But in this case, that means less sensitive sticks. So we're gonna actually less sensitive it more. And then you're at 100% and then 100%. So this is a highly subjective way of doing it, but it's the way I've done it for years and had really good success with it. And it just gives me some consistency where otherwise I might not enjoy some consistency. And it's also gonna give me a chance to get back down to the ground on what is basically made in flights for almost 100% of what we do, okay? So that's true for rudder, that's true for elevator, and that's true for aileron. And it's all attached to one switch. Now, why not three separate switches? You have a lot of switches there, Brian. The reason we don't do separate switches is because when you're flying a plane, especially on Maiden, the last thing you wanna be doing is searching around for multiple switches. I guarantee you, unless you're some weird expert, you're not gonna be able to figure out which switch to adjust. I think people have a hard time remembering flaps, okay? Let alone which one for which axis of control, okay? If you're one of the weirdos, you're like me. But the thing is, I still don't remember that crap when I'm flying. I remember it before or after I fly, okay? Throttle cut, we're gonna set that to switch H, okay? We're gonna check by looking down here. Throttle cut is on, we should be safe, and we trust that. We shut it off, and now it's live. Okay, throttle cut's back on, and we're safe. All right, so then we're also gonna set up flaps. We're gonna set it to switch B, but we're not gonna set anything, why? Because we don't want those flaps to drive into a weird position, okay? So we wanna make sure they're at zero. It's probably gonna drop the flap down halfway. These are split flaps, guys, remember? If split flaps drive and they overdrive into the bottom, what happens? You bind your servo, you potentially lose your servo. Okay, so you gotta be a little bit careful when you first fire up a plane that has split flaps to make sure it doesn't go into the wrong position. 
I am gonna set this to two seconds. Well, you do 720 seconds, that's crazy. I didn't mean to do that, but why would you ever want that? That's crazy. All right, and then linked, I don't even know what that means to be honest. But then right now, elevator, we're not gonna do correction there either because we still haven't landed the elevator. So at the end of the day, that should be what we need, but we're gonna go ahead and set up timer. Five minutes is probably a little bit short. I would say uh, 2200 milliamp hour. Let's just do five minutes to start. With a one, one out active, that means anything over 25%. We'll start the timer and it's gonna keep running until one minute it's gonna have a voice call out. At 20 seconds, it's gonna be nothing. At 10 seconds, it's gonna be a voice. And then at expiration, it's gonna be a tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. All right, so that takes care of the basics. Obviously, we have landing gear that we need to be careful about so they don't retract when we first powered up, but generally speaking, that doesn't happen. If they are in the opposite condition, I like to have my flaps like, or my gear retracted here and then normal here. So it's always the same on every plane. I like my normal flight mode for flaps all the way back, take off flaps and landing flaps. Okay, so that's always good and important to have. You also notice that nothing's happening. Why is it not happening? Didn't we associate that to switch B? Look, switch B. Oh, it's not changing because we have no change called out. Okay. All right, and then I want this to be See? And then she calls out what the mode is, which is invaluable when you're flying because then you don't have to wonder what's going on. But if you get more experienced, you'll be able to tell what's going on from the performance of the plane. However, the difference between AS3X and off may not be so obvious, but the difference between AS3X off and safe will be a big difference because it's gonna automatically level the plane. It's also gonna deaden the sticks somewhat because you're gonna have limitations on your bank and pitch and roll, okay? All right, so the next step is to start landing wires and then bind. So we have to make a decision. The decision will be made right now, basically, and I'm not sure what to do still, but we're gonna try anyway. Okay, so we have, if we do end pins, I feel like we would be able to reach and point the end pins either direction and we'd be fine. Now, if you're just using a conventional receiver and you don't want stabilizer, just drop all your cables down there, you'll be golden, okay? Now there is a lot of room in there. And if we did the AS3X, how about we did this? If we did this, the end pins aren't gonna give us enough clearance, but I think we can drop this down into that cavity. How are you gonna keep it level? Watch this guys, watch this. I'm gonna open this thing up and I'm gonna drop this thing out and just very carefully, I'm gonna slide the cable out. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull the rest out. Don't kink your cable. I almost did there. That was a whoops akins. All right, so we're gonna go with the 631. Why the 631? You're gonna see in a minute. I'm gonna take this plane and set it up on its nose like that. If I can get that to stay, sweet. So now what I need to do is I just need to land cables and the cables are gonna be landed based on what the monitor mode, if you wanna scroll to monitor mode for me there. The monitor mode is gonna tell you exactly where each of those cables needs to land. However, full disclosure, we do not have enough channels to set up thrust reverse and maintain everything else, okay? So if you wanted to do that, you're gonna have to have either an additional channel somehow, or you're gonna have to give up like flaps or something like that. I don't know why you would do that. Okay, so what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about if this fits right here, that would be pretty good. I just don't like having that cable potentially kinked. Right, so I'm gonna be very careful. What's wrong with that? Once we get that done, that's pretty sweet. Okay. And then it's down there. Can you even show the people where it is? See where it is? Pretty good. Okay, so now hopefully we'll have enough length on everything to get that done. So that's what I'm gonna to work toward with the understanding that this antenna is going to walk out of the cabinet. If I went to the other side, the antenna is like, further on this side, so maybe that would be better. Yeah, that's probably smarter. Now, the other thing is this can technically come out like that too, but then I don't want that coming out where the battery is gonna hit it, mm -hmm. okay? I think we're gonna go over on this side. So the first channel is gonna be throttle. Now, how do we tell 
how the wires plug in, it says S plus minus on the back of this. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna plug this into channel one. All right, pretty good, so there's throttle. Now we have lots extra length on this. This is rudder. The next one is ailerons actually. So I'm gonna go to ailerons on channel two. So this one is gonna come under. And then we want the brown, the brown is down. Okay, so that's channel two. And then channel three is gonna be elevator. So we've got rudder and elevator. So here's elevator. So we'll plug that in right there. Okay, and then we're gonna go to rudder. Rudder is the next one. Now, if you guys are wondering what I'm looking at, I'm just looking at the monitor. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Then all this stuff is just, it's there, but it's above and beyond. So I'll just lay that kind of out of sight. I can see it, but you guys can't. So I don't mean to make it hard for you. Okay, so there's rudder, brown being down still. Then the next one is gonna be, after rudder is gonna be gear. So you guys see what I do? I always grab these leads, uh, the sticker, and I just pull those back like maybe an inch or so so it gets away from where the plugs are. Makes it really hard to inspect your plugs if you've got those stupid stickers in the way. See? See how nice that looks? You got that nice little conglomeration of cabling. Right, and then we have flaps here. So flaps, of course, we want brown is down, so I'm gonna hold this, pull it back, and then I'm gonna stick this into channel six. Right, so it looks nice and clean. Now, if you were to use thrust reverse, you would activate this onto its own channel and just the signal lead, and it will flip the direction of rotation, and you'll hear a beep, and then it'll do it. So now, in our case, I don't have enough channels to do it, but maybe we'll test it at some point. But either way, I need to get this mounted, all right? So if I'm gonna mount this, if I'm going to mount this, rather, then I need to get this, ooh, I need the antenna to go underneath the throttle line that we worked around earlier, right? So now this could be flat-ish down there and that's obviously not okay. It needs to be totally flat. And so I'm gonna mount this right down here and it's gonna be mounted sideways, okay? So now we were talking earlier about using glue to mount should we just glue the thing? Because that's what we were talking about. I think we're running short on Velcro, so. Or double sticky tape. Okay, so you're saying yes? Sure. All right, guys, we're gonna glue it. We haven't glued a receiver for a while, but we'll do it today. Now, I do find it strange with the cost component being considered on these Spectrum receivers that they don't include a piece of double-sided tape. It seems to me that with the budget for these receivers, they could probably cover that. But again, there are certain things that just make you say, huh? Okay, so we're just gonna go pretty liberal on that with our application of glue. And then we're actually gonna go a little bit more. And why do we go a little bit more? Because then I can lay that thing down and I can grab my slather tool, pick up some, and I can slather it right there. Now, what am I doing after I slather it? I'll be waiting a minute or two for this to tack up. And you see, I've just spread that and slathered it. Now, make no mistake, guys, you'll be able to rip that off. And if you get in an accident, it might rip off. And at that point, you'll just have to stick it back on there, whether that be with glue or with some other technique. But the idea is when you crash a plane, Plan on things not staying where they're supposed to be because you crashed it. Um, okay, so then how do you know this is ready to use? Well, I mean, it's gonna get all sticky and weird. And so you can just let this stuff kind of do its thing, okay? So I'm gonna let that set up for just a second longer and I'll throw away this Q-tip. Now, the other thing too is just keep in mind that's the uh, fake China glue. That's like the knockoff China glue. The good stuff comes from FMS. So if you would have used the real Chinese glue, then it'd be extra good. Where does China get their knockoff China glue from? Oh, uh, it's another factory down the street. Oh. It's actually it's still two, in China. Two floors up and three um, addresses over. 
in the uh, skyscraper in Shenzhen, China. Okay, so here this goes. I don't think it's probably tacked up quite enough, but we'll find out in mere moments. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, is that really the best place to put a receiver? And the answer to your question is, there really isn't a best place to put a receiver. You guys hear the button? I'm pressing it because I like pressing it. Okay, cool. There is only the best place that you decided to put it and you made it work place. Okay, now these could be taped or they could be glued or they could be just left loose, which we're going to do. The other thing is too, look at this guys, look. Now the bundle of joy that was all the excess cable. You know what, I'm sorry. I do have a, a solution for that. Do you remember the solution, camera crew? For the servo wires or for the antenna? Or both? For the servo wires. The antenna. I cut a little slot. Excuse me. Yep, I'm gonna cut a little slot. There's already a slot, so it's a little tempting to use that existing slot, but I'm gonna actually not. I'm gonna do another one. Now, why am I doing two, camera crew? You have two wires. Yep, and why not just use one? Why not just use the one that's there? Well, you don't wanna make the hole that deep, right? I don't wanna fight it because it's a pain in the butt. And so now if I do it this way, it'll be super easy to slide that sucker in there. And then I don't have to think about it ever, ever again, ever, ever again. It's just gonna be in there and it's gonna live a good life. And until such a time as I have a servo fail or some weird thing go on, then I don't have to ever think about it again. And then it just goes in there and it just lives all happy. So guys, I don't know if you're used to seeing Brian Phillips RC videos, but they're super short as you can tell. And we do long format content for a reason. That was facetious, in case you were wondering. We do long format content for a reason because we find that it is more helpful to the beginner and it's more helpful to people that actually are looking for answers. And if you're one of those people looking for answers, you found the right place. It's Brian Phillips RC. We're here with you so that you can have the best possible RC experience that money can buy. And we're gonna help you make some good choices, speaking of money, when you buy things, because then you can help support us while you're in your search for your next airplane. Okay, so see this? This went all the way over there and it's too far. Now we can just exit wherever. I told you I wasn't sure about that, and I wasn't. I feel like that needs to almost go, gosh, how do I do that? I think I need to make another awesome channel here. You guys see what I'm doing? I'm just making an awesome channel there. And I apologize, me and the camera crew are working to try to make this so that you guys can see really good, but it is just a tight, tight hole. Okay, and then same thing here, antenna time. This one's gonna go a little bit deeper and I'm gonna just stop short and I'm gonna cut back so I don't accidentally slice and dice the antenna. Okay, you guys see what I did there? Now this antenna is more delicate than the servo wires or the consequences are higher if I damage it. Not so much the delicacy, it's maybe not any more delicate per se, but it's higher consequences if you make a mistake. Look how nice that is now. Now this antenna can actually go back to the storage bay back here and operate from a perfect vantage point. I think maybe if I'm lucky. Oh yes, awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna work this down and that's where it needs to go. And then that servo is not gonna sp spin to that side. Look how nice that turned out. That's actually better than expected. Miracles do happen. Okay, so here we go. So there you have it guys. Nice cable management 101 from Brian Phillips RC. If you guys copy along as you're building yours, let us know in the comments below so we know that we're doing it right and you guys are getting some value out of it. Obviously, when we do these videos, we spend a lot of time and effort, and so we do see comments, and it is encouraging to us if we know that you guys are getting some value out of it. So let us know. All right, so without further ado, that is a really nice install. I like the way that turned out. I was very nervous. There was so much crap going on. 
you know, remember what was his name from China? Ying. Ying. Ying screwed up and we fixed the problem. So that's pretty cool. All right, so guys, real quick, we're gonna get ready to bind, okay? It's gonna time out if I go into this. So I'm just gonna hang tight there. I'm gonna leave my uh, cover over here. Now you'll notice the prop is installed. So we're gonna take some extra safety precautions and uh, we'll just slide this in here. First, let's look at this. Strap, does it slide? Yes, it does. Good job, FMS. Okay, if it doesn't slide, that was a mistake, by the way. And I wish that was way further back. And by the way, that is always true, pretty much. You need these things to slide for them to be effective. Okay, and now that we've done what we did with the thing, you know, the thing, I need to go less tight than if I didn't have the thing, you know, the thing. That'd be the shelf liner, guys, in case you're wondering. Okay, push that through. Okay, see how hard? Like I can literally hold the plane. I can hold the plane by the battery. That is not good on your batteries, by the way, but I just want to demonstrate it did slip a little bit, but it's not going to move unless you crash. The only time you're going to get that much G-force on the battery that's not also being applied to the plane around it is when you crash, okay? All right, so we're ready to bind. I have a safe spot. I'm prepared to su support the plane and stop it from taking off. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. XT60 will work with an IC3, as you can see. And then look at this. I can reach in here and press the doohickey on the dilly whopper. Here it is. Ah, it's flashing. Look at the flashing light, guys. That is the bind mode. Waiting. Auto configuring the telemetry. Okay. Elevator is not hooked up. Rudder is the wrong direction. Ailerons are the wrong direction. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps don't matter because we didn't ruin them. That's the important part. Throttle's not moving, which is important. Throttle cut is on. Throttle stick is up. It's been tested. Now throttle cut is off. <laughs> throttle cut's on and tested. So we have tested all the surfaces. Our timer is cleared. Our throttle cut is still on. We always double, triple check things to make sure we're safe. Before I do things like this, what do you think would happen if that prop went right now? We'd probably cut you. We'd go to the hospital. Retracts are now in the retracted position. I heard them cycle and they're gonna be down in the opposite condition from what I want. So pretty much every control surface is wrong right now, okay? I love the function though, very nice. Now let's see if the canopy will go on as we configured it. Mm, guessing it will, maybe, 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 no. Okay, I gotta try to get this out of the way. And over to the side, see if we can get that stuff down there. Okay. Yeah, buddy. Awesome. Okay, so now we continue the radio setup. And you're probably thinking to yourself, good Lord, there's a lot of steps in this. Yes, you're right, there are. Many, many steps, okay? Elevator up, elevator down. Okay, so it's the only control surface that's the right direction. Sweet, at least we can get this landed. Now remember, we need to go into the clavis. The clavis, the outside one, okay? So the clavis needs to go to the outside one. It needs to come out, so I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna unscrew this. Be careful, the little thingy that slides through the hole. Um, if you break the head off of the schlingy, it's going to be a problem, because it won't work. Okay, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for alignment here. It's slightly up right now, so I didn't get it far enough and I haven't snapped it in yet, okay? So I'm gonna come out of here, and then I'm gonna pull this in one, two halves. And then we're gonna retest. Ooh, that's too far, so one half out. Let's retest. Look at that, perfectly aligned. Snap it in, slide this little collar back, and then elevator up, elevator down. Looks like it's working, sweet. And let's see the steerable. Oh, that's so awesome looking. 
Okay, so guys, we're getting there. Elevator up, elevator down. Wrong. Servo setup, travel, reverse, rudder. Correct, 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 correct. Incorrect, ailerons. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right, y'all left, y'all right, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, everything seems pretty good. I feel like we're gonna have some disparity on our taxi from our actual rudder position. That might be okay though. Now we need to get flaps worked out. Did you notice that's popped up? When did that pop up? Oh, see it pop up guys? We got lucky. Why is it popping up? Oh goodness gracious, is it really? It's hitting, it's hitting, hitting the wires guys. I thought we had that worked out. Evidently we didn't. That is very picky. There's not a lot of room for that. That is wires. a one tight hole. And then they want, and they didn't have them stick out the bottom. What a bunch of goofballs. That is tight, 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 like a tig. Goodness gracious. I'll have to keep an eye on it for a minute. Okay, I think it's good. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to also reverse gear. I'm gonna show you a trick. When you know the gear are deployed, but you're in the wrong condition, you click and switch at the same time, watch. Okay, so now what I can do is I can flip this over and demonstrate that's the way I want my condition for the gear down. That's the way I want my condition for the gear up. That's pretty sweet actually. Oh yeah, so cool. Okay, so now back to flaps. Let's talk about flaps for a minute. All right, so now that we know we're not gonna be destroying our flaps, we can go in here and set. Let's set some elevator correction. Let's do six and 10. And you're like, how do you know that, Brian? I don't. Wrong way, it needs to go negative. How do I know? Because I'm looking at the flaps as I do this. Hundred percent, perfect. So there's takeoff flaps, I'm probably gonna go like, let's go 25. Okay, so we got takeoff flaps and then we have landing flaps are gonna be barn doors. Okay, does that look, is that all the way? That's hundreds? Yeah, like it's up okay, there. so now watch this. I'm gonna go back to servo setup. I'm gonna go to flaps while I have them pulled toward my belly all the way deployed. I'm gonna highlight this number. So 125, not uncommon for an FMS model. Okay, check out the barn doors. Oh yeah. I'd actually like them to come down even more, to be honest. Uh, they're not deploying at the same rate. Are they? You see? Okay, so I'm gonna back this off just a little bit. Okay, so 110%. Huh. Watch this one. It's like it's going faster. Hold on. I wanna go back to flap system. I wanna change this to full speed, normal. You remember how they said slow flaps? Mm -hmm. In the description? I'm pretty sure they didn't mean that. That was a joke. Ha ha ha. Joke's on us. Not that I really care, because I'm gonna do it with my radio system anyway. Right. But let's say two seconds. Am I crazy or is there a difference? It's like that servo just kicks in a split second sooner. That's really subtle, but I don't think you're wrong. But how do you? I don't think you can. So here's what's gonna happen, guys. I just wanna tell you, when you have flaps that operate at different times, then you can cause your plane to actually have a yaw effect because you've got like basically an air brake coming out and it's gonna, let's say this one comes out one second and this one comes out in two seconds. So eventually right. it catches up, but for that moment in time when you have half deflection on one side, you're gonna create some different lift configuration and yaw. So you might see your plane do kind of some weird stuff while it's transitioning. If you find that to be a problem, Maybe you go to high speed. 
deployment. But either way, I don't care. I think it's good enough. It'll be fine. I don't think that's gonna be enough rudder authority to handle the P factor, but we'll find out if I'm wrong about that. Okay, so you guys can feast your eyes on the setup for the flaps. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into forward programming. This is our first time setup. Now that we have all the settings set, we need to set up a yesterday and safe. So settings, first time setup. Yep. Yep. Okay, now look at the plane. This is not where it sets its attitude trim, but I'm gonna go ahead and hold it anyway. Wish I had something to hold it, but I'm gonna hold it with my hand. Okay, so continue. Set it on snows and hit continue. Look at the orientation, looks pretty much correct to me. Continue. Gain channel select. I'm gonna select the D switch, which is aux two. It's gonna reboot, I'm holding it. Look for one dance. That's one dance. Okay, now I'm gonna go back into forward programming. Remember guys, if you don't know how to do this, this is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We go through start to finish from the box all the way into the air, usually starting with the air, so that you guys don't have to know all the details. You can just follow along if you're new to the hobby or returning. Hopefully we're helpful. To gyro settings, ES3X settings. Set that to four times. ES3X gains. Okay, see how it says flight mode one. It's not changing, so that didn't work. F mode set up. It was already set to aux two. I don't know why that's not working. Now it's working. Okay, so remember that's just a label. FM mode, inhibit, on, off, and also on in safe, okay? which we'll come back to safe in a minute. I want fixed adjustable. Perfect. Good. Good, okay. So now we have to set the master gain. I tricked it because I hit buttons too quick. Between steps. Okay, so system setup, gain channel select. Aux two, no, aux three, aux three, aux three. That's our roller, okay? Then we're gonna go to first time safe setup. Let's verify. Yup, looks right to me. Continue. I wanna set up an aux, or in flight mode three. Okay, so this is where you don't want it to fly like this because if you're flying like this, you're gonna to tend to go uphill. So you have to actually have that held in position so that it is, let's see if our ordinance will do the trick. Let's use a bomb to hold it up. Oh yeah, that's pretty perfect Ooh, that's pretty actually. Close. Pretty dang close, isn't it? Mm-hmm, I would say close. If I could get close it to stay though, stay. I don't know if it's gonna stay. Mm. How about this? I'll just use that as a guide. Okay, so now level, model, and capture attitude. Hold still. There you go. You can do it again if you think there's some question, okay? Now watch what happens if I lay it down and do the same thing. See? <laughs> so you don't wanna be flying around like that. You want it to be pretty much level or maybe, I don't wanna be going way downhill either. Okay, good deal. So five, six, close enough. All right, so then what I can do is I can go next. So in flight mode three, I wanna limit my pitch down to 75, my pitch up to like 75, and then I'm gonna leave the roll at 60. See this, watch this. That's what you have to turn on. I don't care about the angle limits in this mode because it's off. I do in that because it's got angle demand. That's the angle demand. 
Okay, we already did that. <laughs> Made us go through three times. Watch for two dances. Dos amigos. Okay, so we're good. So back we go. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go throttle cuts on. We're gonna verify it is on. We're gonna control surface test again. Y'all left, y'all right. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Okay, good, we're in safe right now. Safe is gonna limit our authority. Off is not gonna do anything. AS3X is not gonna do anything in that regard either. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide my bomb back on or whatever this is, drop tank. Okay, so the drop tank is back on. Dangerous, don't lay it on your throttle stick like that. That was an accident. So I'm gonna take and AS3X is on. So you'll note that it's not doing anything. When I turn on safe, off, safe. Finding the quickest route to level. Look at the elevator. It's attempting to level the plane. Look at the elevator, it's attempting to level the plane. Great, okay, so now that we know that safe is correcting in the right direction and everything is working, now I'm gonna check AS3X. So I have to turn off throttle cut, I'm gonna put it to AS3X, I'm gonna give throttle over 25%, then I'm gonna throttle cut it again and I'm gonna test to make sure everything is safe. I'm gonna turn my master gain, auxiliary three, all the way up, all the way up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Watch the rudder. It's going the way, no, come back to where you were. It's going the way I'm moving it. It's going the way I'm moving it. It's going on the elevator the way I'm moving it. It's going the way I'm moving it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Aileron is gonna go up. It's gonna go down. If you can't see, put your hand on it and feel it. You can definitely feel it, okay? It's going down, it's going up. Okay, now I'm gonna check the gains. This is master gain. All the way down, all the way up. In the middle, off, on, off. Auto leveling and AS3X. Got it? Okay, so now what we can do is because we're at 4X or four times master gain, I'm gonna go back into forward programming and change that clear my timer. Go into forward programming. Gyro settings, AS3X settings, and I'm gonna turn that down to 1X. Then I'm gonna put my knob to the middle and I'm gonna walk out and everything should be done. But listen, all the way up, nothing. Throttle cuts off because it rebooted. Throttle, throttle cuts on. I can't hear or see it move but I can hear it here, okay? The ailerons. See how much less intense it is? That's all the way up, all the way off. So if it's not enough movement, you may need to go up to two X. You may need to go up to four X. But my general rule of thumb, and again, this is subjective on this step here. This, I want to be approximately in the middle. So if I go from this plane to that plane, to the next plane, I don't have a massive change that makes it really hard for me to get it back where I need it, okay? All right, so that's all. Now let's mark the center of gravity and this thing is ready to fly, provided the center of gravity works out, which we haven't tested. And then we're gonna try to fly this thing quick before it gets dark. So we have a marker and we have calipers, okay? I'm gonna turn my calipers on. They look like this, 60 to 65. So I'm gonna go ahead and, this is locked, that's weird, what the heck? Oh, I was grabbing, I was grabbing both sides. 60 to 65, whoops. So 60 millimeters to 65 from the leading edge, inboard, okay? So I'm gonna go back here, there's 60. I'm gonna go back here, just kind of looking at some different clues because there is a bit of a taper on the wing here. Okay, then 65. So here's 65. Now don't overthink this stuff. I mean, you gotta get it pretty close. That is a tight range actually. But just use the clues that you have at your disposal, which would be like panel lines and things like that, usually a good place 
to confirm and corroborate that you're getting to the same spot on both sides. That's gonna give you a place to get your center of gravity worked out. And the way I like to work out my center of gravity is the same on every plane, and that's with battery if I can. I don't like adding dead weight to planes because it's not gonna do anything for you in the air, except for the CG. Now, a plane that's not CG'd outright is gonna fly terribly, and so you do need to get your center of gravity right, especially if you're a newer pilot. On the back holes, it's tail heavy. On the front holes, it's gonna be very tail heavy. So in that regard, we need to get in here and slide this battery way forward. Okay, way forward. And why was it so far back? Because the stupid wire was blocking it. Now, we have to reroute this again over here. Okay, so we'll just tuck this down in here. And honestly, the cable management is critical on this plane because it's so small. Okay, the 1100 millimeter, I wouldn't think it'd be so small, okay? So on the back hole, we are still tail heavy. On the front hole, still very tail heavy. Can you go further forward? I don't know. And if I can't, then that might be a little bit challenging, okay? So I'm gonna take the 2200 4S, or 3S rather, I'm gonna try to slide it forward, and I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Did they say 60 to 65? Mm -hmm. They did, but they kind of draw theirs a lot further back. They're drawing it on this panel line. I wonder if they just meant a different number, because that seems like aggressively far back. I mean, the other thing is, I could just try a smaller battery too, but then that's not gonna get us, it's gonna get us further forward, but it's not gonna necessarily fix the CG. Right. How far right. back do you have to go to be? Well, I'm gonna tell you where they put it. They were putting it on this panel line here in the drawing. I'm like on the center of gravity pretty good there, but it still makes me nervous. And I'm gonna take the ordinance off and just see, whoa, those gear door will stab your ordinance. If you're trying to take it off, you have to push the gear doors closed. Look at that, I ripped, I ripped my tank. Huh. That's too bad. Also, don't forget to open your doors up. If you close them, they won't pop back up, okay? Well, I'm not sure. I think we're probably just gonna go with it and see how it does, because to be honest with you, that's another five millimeters back before we get close, probably six or seven, to actually get it all the way back there and make it nose heavy. But I have a really hard time believing that that's not gonna be about right. So I don't know. I think we're just gonna fly it a little bit on the tail heavy side and just hope for the best. Now we do have a stabilizer in here, so that'll help make up for in disparity. Truth is guys, if you get a plane and you're trying to get it to center gravity out and you can't come up with any sort of good counterweight, because let's talk about it. There's just not that much room up here. You're gonna have to probably take off the cal and add lead weight up here to get that thing to balance. Let's hope we don't have to do that. But at the end of the day, FMAs, FMS does make a really nice plane. And I gotta say, this is a looker if you are into the zero, this is definitely a good example of one. So you'll wanna check it out from the links in the video description below, buy one for yourself, and you can see how well it flies, and maybe even do something a little different than what we did. But guys, look how sweet that looks with the ordinance there. And then of course, it's kinda of hard to hold, by the way. So we're gonna put the flaps out, so sweet. And then we'll retract the gear one more time for you. So cool. All right guys, stabilized auto leveled or off, as well as all the control directions checked, rechecked and checked again, as well as the master gain set up here, as well as dual rate and expo, as well as throttle cut. This thing is completely set and ready to go. We appreciate you watching these unbox build radio setups. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. If you wanna get a direct line to me, the best way to do it is through Patreon. If you're one of our 50 supporters so far, you already know that, ask questions, we'll see it. I get better notified of those because there's a lot less people in that pool to draw from. So also we have a special thanks to our YouTube members and people that provide YouTube super thanks. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for liking the videos when you watch them and thanks for watching the videos all the way through. When you do, it does help us in terms of our performance on YouTube because most of you are gonna watch part of a video and we totally get it. You got things to do, these are long videos. But at the flip side of that, there's a lot of people that need help. And so we're trying to provide that for our audience of newer pilots and returning pilots. And so we hope that you find value enough to occasionally watch the whole video. 
All right, that being said, if you wanna buy this from the links, you will help support us. Remember the 631 is one of the links that was blocked by YouTube in their vast wisdom, which is ridiculous. So if you can't find it, just click on the receiver choice, which will be right next to the transmitter choice and you'll be able to choose it there, but you're just choosing the 631 if you wanna copy what we did, or if you're getting one with a reflex, we did not get a reflex in ours, then that would be something you could do and just get like a 620 or maybe the 8220T, which is gonna be big in this model. Full mm -hmm. disclosure, I would not recommend it. I wouldn't even recommend a 637T, it's too big, I think. Yeah, because it'd be longer. Yeah, you'd have to have it up on top of that shelf, and we barely got ours to close. Yeah. So guys, hopefully we've answered all your questions. The Zero from FMS, the A6 M5, NX6, NX10, and the AR631, as well as A2200 milliamp hour, Gen 1 smart pack can all be found down below. So thanks for watching guys, so much more coming from Brian Phillips RC.